بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم أعزائي الطلبة ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello and welcome in new lecture of medical parasitology In the first lecture we already divided the medical, medical parasitology in two main brands Medical protozoa and medical hymen And hymenthology, medical hymenthology can also be divided into three main segments Trematodes, cystodes and nematodes these are the main branch of helminths, helminths of human. In the first lectures, we study the trematodes, and today we start with the first one, Fasciolopsis boschii. Fasciolopsis boschii, as you can see here in the real picture, in the left side, and the diagram of picture, diagram of parasites in the right one. As you can see here, Fasciolopsis boschii, the giant intestinal fluke. So the size is very big and can be called giant intestinal fluke. Fluke, we said uh, the synonym of trematode. So we can say we can say fluke or trematode. Both of them are true. These parasites uh, cause human disease in natural geographic distribution that limited to oriental countries uh, here we uh, take a short notes or outline of morphology and biology and life cycle of the parasites <coughs> Fasciolopsis boschii is a large fleshy worm broadly ovate or elongate ovoidal this is the shape of this parasite the location of this parasite in the human body is usually the human uh, the parasite is attached to the wall of the didnum or jejunum. The uh, size of this parasite is 20 to 75 millimeter, so it's very long, and 8 to 20 millimeter wide and 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 thick. This measure measurements of this parasite and he will uh, easily note that this parasite is very large the eggs of Fasciolopsis boschii are also large and measures 130 to 140 microns by 80 to 85 microns the breadth of this eggs uh, this parasite, this eggs of parasites uh, usually unembryonated when evacuated in the host feces an embryonated means that needs sometimes to be embryonated and become able to uh, infect or induce the new infection to the human able to start the new cycle of the parasite they are difficult to differentiate from eggs of Fasciola hepatica, the the next parasite, Fasciola hepatica, we we will take it in the next lecture. Fasciola hepatica, the eggs of these parasites, Fasciolopsis boschii and Fasciola hepatica, are very similar and sometimes identical and very difficult to be differentiated from each other. The, the next page is outlined the life cycle of this parasite. To proceed with their development, eggs of Fasciolopsis boschii must, must reach quite fresh water. Here they embryonate in 3 to 7 weeks at a temperature of 26.7 to 32. This, uh, this time, this uh, period, of time and this temperature is very important for the eggs of this parasite to be embryonated and as we said able to induce the infection for the uh, for the uh, uh, intermediate host as we said in the in the first two lectures when we divided or we mentioned the kind and types of uh, hosts, we mentioned that 
some some parasites have two uh, hosts final host and uh, intermediate host this parasite from those parasites that have two hosts final host uh, that uh, is the human and the intermediate host which is the snail the snail in can be infected with the uh, miracidium of the uh, eggs following following which a miracidium breaks out of the shell through the opened opercolum so the life cycle started with the eggs of parasites that escape from the or carried by the stool of a human to the environmental external 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 environment and uh, miracidium the second uh, larval stage of these parasites so break out from the eggs uh, through the opened upper column then escape from its embryonic membrane and swim about in the water so the water the fresh water is very important for the life cycle of these parasites and for very important to, to the miracidium to be swimmed out and continue with the life cycle on contact with the appropriate small snail as we mentioned the uh, snail that is the intermediate host from the species of segmentina this species serves as a, serves as a, the a snail of uh, that required for the uh, intermediate host of Fasciolopsis boisci in the snail the miracidium penetrates the soft tissues of a snail and transform into sporocyst so the third uh, larval stage of this parasite is called sporocyst so the first one is the eggs the second one is miracidium and the third one is sporocyst and this mother spore sac a generation of radia is produced so we have the now we have a new larval stage of this parasite called radia so eggs miracidium sporocyst and radia <coughs> Usually, the radial generation produces a number of vigorous cercaria. Until this level, all these stages are produced inside the snail tissues. After that, when the cercaria produced, they erupt from the snail and after swimming about, crawl onto aquatic vegetation and insist. These Cercaria insist on the aquatic plants, aquatic vegetation, and to be ready to the to be, to be taken by the human. Man commonly becomes infected while consuming this aquatic vegetation. So this is the this is the root of infection. This is the style of infection by consuming the aquatic vegetation that contain the uh, metacercaria cercaria that insist on the plants aquatic aquatic plants so that some of the insisted metacercaria are set free and swallowed after existing in the duodenum as we said the location of infection inside the human body the larva become attached to the nearby mucosa and about three months develop into mature worms mature fluke mature trematode anyone can you say is all of them are true here that the picture or photograph of the eggs very similar to the eggs of fasciola hepatica here is the outline the picture of the life cycle of this parasite we can start from number one here is and embryonated eggs pass in feces from human body feces of body and embryonated eggs in water here 
and the escape Miracidae that hatch and penetrate the snail and inside the snail we see these three stage of parasites sporocyst, radia and cercaria when cercaria produced become ready to escape from the uh, uh, snail tissue and become free swimming cercaria here and insisted on the aquatic plants metacercaria here in number six metacercaria on water plant ingested by humans or pigs causing infection here the pigs as we mentioned in the first lectures pigs now here called or serve as reservoir host مضيف خازن مضيف خازن للإصابة reservoir host so uh, these metacercaria can be consumed by human and start the infection the infection start in the duodenum or genome as we said existed in duodenum and become adults warm in small intestine here in the last step or last stage of this parasite <coughs> Regard, regarding to the pathogenesis and symptoms the damage produced by these large fleshy worms is mechanical obstructive and toxic due to the large of the large size of this parasite and uh, as we also mentioned in the first lectures the effects of parasites can be mechanical or obstructive and toxic uh, based on the uh, style of the infection based on the size of parasites and other factors that uh, influence the infection in human at each site of attachment a mucosal ulcer is produced and mainly depends on this this uh, mainly depend on the number of parasites so a few worms may cause no serious intestinal symptoms but frequently there are there are dozens to hundreds in the infection so these can embarrass digestion and at times cause acute obstruction toxic metabolites of the parasites also absorbed and produce edema of the face especially around the eyes of the abdomen also and lower extrem extremities there are a notable eosinophilia related to or associated with the most of the uh, three method infection in, in human and Fasciolopsis boschii is one of them the early symptoms are diarrhea and hunger pains those with heavy infections can mimic peptic ulcer also ascites and asthenia can be seen and abdominal pain anorexia nausea and vomiting typically occur these are the typical symptoms of fasciolopsis boschii infections the diagnosis is most commonly based or depend on the recovery of characteristic eggs of Fasciolopsis boschii in the stool uh, here uh, we mentioned the diagnosis of that routinely occur or, or routinely done in the laboratory laboratories uh, but there are many another diagnosis technique or diagnostic techniques uh, like uh, serological techniques, uh, uh, molecular techniques, techniques that recently uh, established for the diagnosis of these parasites. For the treatment of this parasite, the fasciolobiasis can be treated with prescription called praziguental, taken by mouth and should be taken with liquids during a meal. This drug, this drug is the drug of choice for this parasite that approved, approved by FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Uh, this is all about this parasite and, and the next, next 
lecture we will take the fasciola, fasciola hepatica and fasciola gigantica that related to this parasite and in terms of the eggs are very similar and difficult to be differenti differentiated from each other any question any any notes uh, don't hesitate to contact me and ready to answer all your questions thank you and see you in the next next lecture wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh